Welcome everyone, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Sarah Dexter, I use she, her pronouns, and I am an admissions and recruitment specialist here at the Brown School, uh, Washington University in St. Louis. Um, I'm really excited to be joined by a panel full of current students who are here to talk about um, why they chose the Brown School, because ultimately um, y'all had a lot of choices when you're selecting what graduate programs you wanted to pursue, and you all do as well. And so um, I'm excited to hear more just about uh, our panel's journey here and some of the things that really influenced their decision to come ultimately to the Brown School. So um, we're gonna get started right away because we have a ton of questions uh, both on the script and then ones that you all sent ahead of time. So um, I would like to have our panelists introduce themselves first. So um, if you could share your name, pronouns, uh, any relevant background information you'd like to share, what program you're in and when you're graduating. Hi, my name is Obad. I'm, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a first year Master of Public Health student specializing in global health. I'm originally from Minnesota. I went to the University of Minnesota, the real U of M. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, got my BA in Geography and Public Health. And um, my current interests are primarily around uh, maternal and child health and climate and climate mitigation and adaptation. Hi, I'm Scott. Uh, I use he, him, his pronouns. I am a 15-year Army veteran, um, and that's where a lot of my focus lies. So I am an MSW, MST uh, dual degree student, uh, first year MSW. I'm going to be starting the MST next year. Um, my concentration is individualized and be behavioral health and integrated health. We just came up with a name, so I, I have to kind of prompt myself to remember what that is. And that's just so that I can focus on veteran studies and work with that population. Good afternoon, my name is Jackson Sarter. I'm from DC. I attended Morehouse College. Um, I got a BA in economics. Um, my pronouns are he, him, his. Um, my work experience, I've done 10 years of case management for the school system. I worked for Child Protective Services, the judicial system, and within that 10 years, I also did strategic partnerships with organizations and companies. Um, my interests are, uh, well actually my concentration is social economic development, so I'm looking at um, pivoting into corporate social responsibility. Hey everybody, my name is Christian Vargas. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a second year Masters of Public Health student on the generalist track. Um, I'm originally from Southern California. I'm a first generation Mexican American slash Chicano. Um, my interests lie mostly in the realm of health equity, so looking at racial and ethnic health disparities and working towards uh, health equity for immigrants and refugees. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Uh, thank you all for giving those introductions and just sitting here, it was really cool to hear just the, the breadth of experiences and identities and. Um, Y'all just come from all over, which is it's a really cool thing, um, from where I sit at least. So uh, to get started, as I mentioned earlier, I really want to go through kind of um, how you all ended up coming to the Brown School ultimately. So, um, so we have questions again that I've developed, questions you all submitted beforehand um, that we'll get to, and then if you um, would like to use the chat feature, you can submit questions through that, that chat box and that will be prompted on our screen as well. And so we'll try to get to, the, to um, all of those questions in this really quick uh, hour session. Um, our friend Christian will have to leave a little bit early, so you might see him kind of jet off um, around 12.45, but otherwise we'll, um, we'll be here until one. So our first question um, that I would like all of our panelists to address, when you were applying to graduate schools, what were you looking for in a program? It keeping feels, it super vague. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so long ago, but um, I think for me, I was really looking for a space where, one, I would get research experience and making sure that um, I'd be able to sustain whatever next steps will be for me. And at one point it was the idea of a PhD, but I don't think that that's there anymore. <laughs> um, but also, um, being very transparent, I didn't know much about the Brown School when I applied. I, I applied. I knew, I saw when I was on SOFIS, I saw, oh, WashU has an MPH program, excellent. 
I know Wash U is like the prestige of Wash U. And then I was like, oh, I also know they have a um, like top med school. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. so their MPH program must be like a solid place to be as well. And then that's when I found out that the MPH program was actually housed within the School of Social Work and that the Brown School is one of the top social work programs in the country. And I was like, okay, this makes so much sense for me because doing research and my background and looking at um, maternal health and um, maternal mortality disparities within the United States and globally, um, I think it makes the most sense for the MPH program to be, spa to be housed within the School of Social Work because you get that health equity focus and that's mm -hmm. something that I was really hoping to get while during um, graduate school and it's definitely something that I'm already experiencing in both um, my interest in maternal and child health and um, climate variability and sustainability research as well. Yeah. Um, probably the, the, the biggest thing that brought me here was the fact that the Brown School, as far as their MPA, uh, MS, MSW program goes, will give you a much broader range of what you can do with social work. A lot of programs that I was looking at were really focused on the clinical aspect, and that's not necessarily the direction I wanted to go. So. The more generalist approach that the Brown School has was very helpful. Um, the other thing is it's a smaller campus, which mm -hmm. I really liked. Uh, I, I came, I just did my undergrad at Kansas State University, and that's a large Big 12 school, and it was kind of refreshing to see, one, a football stadium that wasn't holding 50,000 people. <laughs> um, so the impetus is more on your education and less on drawing in the athletic dollars. So I, I thought that was really valuable in a school where you're ultimately learning how to help people. So. so what brought me to the Brown School was I was very interested in, you know, during the Mike Brown situation, I wanted to be in St. Louis. Um, in addition, I have a mentor that went to the Brown School. So <laughs> the Brown School is the only um, MSW school I applied to. And I was very fortunate enough to get in. Um, I'm also a part of Homegrown, which is focused on uh, promoting um, programs for African American males, and uh, that that was very important to me. I think for me, the top three considerations were around affordability, were around um, like having a lot of individualized attention, so that you could have access to professors and have access to. Um, a lot of the networks that would help you grow professionally. And then the third um, consideration was sort of as Ugbed was alluding to earlier, that focus around health equity. Um, so I didn't mention this before in my biography, but my original uh, undergraduate degree is in biology, but I also have a lot of background in medical anthropology. Um, and so being able to attend a school that really focuses a lot on the social determinants of health was something that was really important to me. And the fact that the Brown School emphasized that lens of equity throughout not just the MPH program, but through the MSW program and the MSP program, and to integrate them all into one cohesive lens was something that was very attractive to me. Thanks for sharing that. It sounds like um, there is similar to where you're all coming from before getting here, a lot of really different reasons that, um, that drew you to the Brown School ultimately. Um, and Jackson, you're definitely not the only person who, um, Brown was their number one and only, and so I like, <laughs> personally I'm like, I like hearing those stories. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so our next question, which whoever feels um, like they want to answer this, they can, but what was something you didn't know to look for in schools that you were glad you found at the Brown School? So perhaps something you didn't realize was important until it was. I, I could answer that. Yeah. Um, one of the things I found was looking, I, I did apply to multiple schools, and one of the things I found was that a lot of them, they don't have a lot of flexibility with what you want to do with your practicum. Uh, one school would plug in your interests and it would come up with a list of five or six or 30 different practicum sites and you could choose from that list, but here at the Brown School, we were given an opportunity basically to, more like the real world when you're applying for a job, go out and find a practicum and really f hone in on where you wanted to work, what, you want, what population you wanted to work with. And so the fact that I didn't know that that was the case before I applied 
really, it was a pleasant surprise when I, when I got here. That's good. For me, um, being 32, um, going back to school <laughs> was a really tough decision. <laughs> you know, foregoing an income to be here. Mm -hmm. um, what I, I didn't really do as much research as other students did, but when I came here, I was very fortunate enough to meet with Professor Jack Kirkland. Um, and prior to coming here, my, uh, my concentration was mental health. And um, he pulled me aside and <laughs> talked to me and explained why I should do social economic development mm -hmm. um, and how important it is to raise low income to moderate income communities um, with regards to the economic approach. Um, and you know, I, I got this email chain um, and it was <laughs> Professor Kirkland um, trying to get me into his East St. Louis seminar class. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> it's crazy because I didn't reply <laughs> or do anything. And I looked at my schedule on Thursday and I was enrolled in this class. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that really changed my trajectory. So um, prior to coming to the Brown School, I would definitely um, echo what everyone was talking about, you know, researching the professors. Because yeah. if you can match your passion with the experts at this school, Sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our next question, which I, I would like you all to answer if you um, feel comfortable. So ultimately, why did you choose the Brown School and what made, it, what made you realize that it was the right place for you? So you had to choose it and then what made it right or what made it feel like, like a home or a community? Can someone else start? <laughs> no, <I'm there. laughs> um, I think, so for me, I was between the Brown School and um, my undergrad, the University of Minnesota, and I was, I was really trying to decide between the two for quite some time, and I actually got an email from the program coordinator at the U of M, and she was like, are, where are you going to school? Um, and I finally decided on the Brown School, and one was because of the funding opportunity that I got to come here. And for me, I think that was like a double-edged sword, sort of, because one, I was like, wow, this school wants me to be here so much that they're offering me this scholarship and I'm so elated. But at the same time, it was kind of like, oh, like, why me? And it was definitely something that um, I've written a plug. I've written a blog <laughs> post that you guys can see on our website about imposter syndrome, and that's definitely something that I have dealt with in the past, the first month or two of un, um, being here. And I think what when I really realized that this was the right place for me was, I think last month and being in my environmental health class with Professor Joe Seams, I took biostats with him for a semester. And uh, <coughs> last semester, <coughs> excuse me, I really realized, wow, my passions and this course and the research that I want to do and the professor and the way that all of this is kind of culminating is like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I'm really glad that like I chose to come here and I'm here now, yeah. I appreciate you sharing that, that it wasn't like an instant like, I belong here yeah. or that I'm supposed to be here. Cause I think um, from what I've heard and I think a lot of people experience that. And so I appreciate you, you yeah. sharing that, that it might, it might take a little bit Absolutely. of time because it is a big transition coming from mm -hmm wherever you're coming from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I am really glad to hear that you found, you found your spot. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, well, one of the biggest things was when, I, when I, I visited, I applied to like six different schools. And um, I, I visited three of the campuses. And then Brown School was the, actually the first campus that I visited. So they all had to live up to what I experienced here. And, when I got here, it was very welcoming. The, the admission staff was really great. They, took, they found another student veteran to talk with me about what it's like here at the Brown School and took me on the tour, did, you know, did all the things you do when you're, when you're touring a school. And it just felt really comfortable and really mm -hmm. welcoming. And then I went to another top tier school. I'll leave their name up because <laughs> what I have to say is not all that important. Um, and I was telling them how passionate I was about working with veterans and how that's a big part of my identity. And they were like, well, you know, our veterans kind of fly under the radar here. And, uh, but, and then I asked them, do you have like a student group? Because WashU has the WUVETS, which is a really active, 
highly regarded student veteran group. And I said, do you have a student group? And they were, no, I don't, I don't know if we have one or not, but you can make one if you, if you want. And so I got this weird vibe from them where I'd been really comfortable here. And honestly, that school and Wash U were the ones that I was really kind of weighing my options with that I wanted to attend. And we finished that, our campus visit there. We went back to the hotel. We were going to be looking at apartments in town. We were that set that that was where I was going to go. And I told my spouse, no, nah, I'm going to go ahead and commit to Wash U. Mm. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, for me, as I mentioned before, the Brown School was the only school that I applied for. Um, well, I applied to, and I'm just so glad that I made that decision. Um, how, like, how did I know it was the right place? Um, just the interaction with the professors. You know, I have friends and classmates from all over the world, and the Brown School, it gives you a global lens, and with a global lens, you can be a global leader, and uh, that's one of the things that I really do appreciate the Brown School. For me, um, I, I had applied to eight schools, and I was weighing my choices between the Brown School and another school that had a comparable um, financial aid package, and so then I looked at cost of living, and cost of living in St. Louis um, was very affordable, like it didn't break the bank compared to going to like New York or DC, which were some of the other options that I was weighing. Uh, I also mentioned before like that health equity focus was not something that I saw as prominently in the other schools of public health, um, and given my own interests, uh, that wasn't, you know, it was very important to me to seek that out. And I think the way that I found out that like I had made the right choice was like once I got here and I got to know the people who are going to be my classmates for the next two years, mm -hmm. um, kind of like as Jackson was saying, like you meet people from so many different backgrounds, they have vastly different life experiences and just like being able to learn from those experiences and kind of be in dialogue because you're also bringing something unique and valuable to the table with your own lived experiences. Um, and so just like having that kind of space that can convene so many different people um, to like help you grow not only as a person but also like professionally grow um, and like gain the kinds of skills that will be uh, crucial to making you successful later on in life is something that I really appreciated the Brown School for. Thanks for sharing um, all those wonderful responses. So this next question, um, I'll leave it up to whoever wants to answer. Uh, how would you describe the community or the, the culture of, um, of Brown School and the Brown School students? I would say um, it's very supportive. Uh, you're in, it's very much a community in which if, um, I always think <laughs> biostats, um, I always think of biostats and um, for a lot of us it was like so like nerve wracking to take that first semester and also taking um, epidemiology mm -hmm. where both of them are so um, math based and it's a lot of hard work. Um, but I think in that course, so many of us like supported one each one another and making sure, hey, do you have, are we like gonna study this weekend? And just making sure that like, I remember, I like missed class one day and like two people texted me and they were like, are you okay? And I was like, it's a very brown school thing to like text your classmates and be like, hey, you weren't in class today, is everything okay? And it's, sometimes I'm like, please leave me alone. But like, also, <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but it's also very, you know, it's very nice to like know that people are, you know, care about you and are caring of your well-being. So it's a very supportive space, I would say. Yeah. Anything else to add? No, I, I'd have to agree that it's yeah. really, really supportive. Um, and then also, at least in the MS, I, maybe you've seen this at the MS, in the MSW program, it's not overly competitive. You're not trying to outdo mm. your classmates. Absolutely. You're, you're actually Absolutely, yeah. working together yeah. on a lot of things. Group work is a big thing here at the school. <laughs> um, and there, it's not just being supportive socially, um, like if you're, if you miss class, they, I've, I've, ha I've gotten texts before too. <laughs> um, but there's, just within the class and with the course materials, yeah. there's a lot of support amongst our cohort. So it's, it's really an interesting environment. Yeah, I definitely echo the same sentiments. Um, when I first moved down here, uh, well actually before I moved, I called the, I don't know if it was like the student center or something, 
And, um, you know, I let them know that I was moving to St. Louis to attend a Brown school. And like within a couple of days, um, a couple of students had called me and we talked about my decision coming down here. And so when I first moved down here, um, I didn't have a bed. <laughs> so I was sleeping on the sofa for like two weeks. And then when um, my furniture was ready to be picked up, um, I was in class. <laughs> and some of my fellow students literally helped me move while I was in class. Um, it's really hard to come to the Brown School and leave without friendships here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we do a lot of group work, which is, you know, assimilation to the real world. Um, you do group projects and whatnot. And as you said, like, it's not competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, we all learn from each other. We all want to do well. And, um, you know, your classmates literally turn into family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's just amazing that when I graduate this May, I will have not only access to friends, but access to like legit global leaders. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think anything else. <laughs> is. Yeah, I was like, that's pretty beautiful. We can just like end the session there, right? <laughs> no, that's great. Th thank you for sharing that. Um, so we've talked a little bit about resources that um, that some of you have used. But um, I'm wondering, were there any resources or what resources have you found that have been particularly helpful at the Brown School or WashU? Um, so career services, stats lab, um, any particular faculty, student groups? Um, what sort of resources have you utilized and how have how they been meaningful to you? Maybe we'll start on this side. So, or Dyke, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Sure. Thanks. Whoever, um, whoever wants to answer. <laughs> two of the things that I'm, that I'm thinking of in my mind right now are the Stat Lab, because that is an incredibly useful resource. <laughs> like I, whenever I was going through the Applied Linear Modeling class, I have this bad tendency to create more work for myself than is necessary, because I wanted to get all fancy and use <laughs> R to create like these chloropleth maps for my uh, cancer mortality project. And I was just like, how do I go about doing this in R? Um, and I got some really helpful resources and advice from somebody there who was actually um, a, a, P, a doctoral student who was also doing something similar for his own doctoral thesis. So he was just like, OK, yeah, I can like show you the ropes here. Um, and it ended up actually being really helpful for my final project. And then the other thing that I was thinking of um, was the student group Mi Gente, which is the Latino student group on campus um, that I've been heavily involved with. and just transitioned out of as co-chair. Um, I think it's been like my uh, second family here at the Brown School just because of like having that, having that community space and like having people with similar lived experiences as mine has been really helpful and supportive throughout my time here at the Brown School. Wow. Uh, for me, um, the biggest resources are social capital uh, with regards to the faculty. I mentioned Jack Kirkland, um, mm -hmm. Dr. Sean Joe, Dr. Nebit, Jewel, um, Barbara Levin, um, no, Barry Rosenberg, um, <laughs> Amy Hunter, Karen Stewart. <laughs> There's just a, the, 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 name, the names go on. Um, and it was, I've learned so much from them. Like being in St. Louis, you have literally access to CEOs. Like, I'm from DC, so if I wanted to call like the mayor or a CEO, like I would have to first go through a, their assistant. Um, I don't have to do that here. You know, um, you can, you know, you can name drop, which was cool um, with the name. The Brown School, you know, um, is very prestigious, and the people that I've mentioned and the people that I haven't mentioned with, with regard to faculty um, were so were very invested in my success and. Um, yeah, like the trajectory that I'm on now is definitely because of them. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I like that you mentioned the stat lab because I haven't utilized it yet, but I'm going to be using it when I <laughs> do my MSP stuff, so it's good to know. Um, for me, the library and the librarians have right. been just an yeah. incredible yeah, resource. Um, anytime you have to do any research, they, they know how to put your search together and, and find the articles and the, and the information that you need. And they're not, a fr they, they encourage you to use them in that capacity as well. So it, it's a really, really great resource here. Um, the other ones that I've kind of found helpful, um, it was like disability resources because mm -hmm. I, I have a, a learning disability and they were, outstanding when it mm -hmm. came to just sitting down and talking to them about what accommodations would be best for me 
and they really provided me with a lot of support and help early on. Um, those offices, no matter what school you go to, they're usually really in flux and they have staff coming in and out. And I'm really excited to see what the new director that's coming on in, in the summer, what he's going to bring to the, to the office. Because just like anywhere else, there's always room for improvement. But mm -hmm. they, they are an outstanding group of people over there. And then I'm gonna put a plug in. Since you plugged your <laughs> blog, I'm gonna, I'm, your blog post, I'm, go, I'm going to plug the Office of Military and Veteran Services mm -hmm. because anytime a veteran needs to try to, or needs help on campus with navigating their benefits or even applying for benefits, uh, Jen Getz uh, over at that office is amazing. And uh, I have the privilege of working with her right now as part of my, my practicum and it's just, I didn't realize how much that, that lady did. It's mm -hmm. just an incredible amount of service to our to the veterans on campus. So. Incredible. Okay. Thanks. Um, so our next question, I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about St. Louis. Um, so tell me about St. Louis. What what do you feel like the city has to offer you as a student, and then maybe someone who's um, who's a budding social worker, public health professional. Talk a little bit about St. Louis and like and what it means to to live here and to work here and go to school here for yeah. you. Yeah. I think for me that was one of the main things that I wanted to remain very cautious of in understanding, hey, I know like the history and um, yeah. the, both the history of St. Louis and the history of Wash U prior to coming here and making sure that as a public health professional, I wouldn't be doing any harm in either of those spaces and making sure that um, I was going to be connecting with professors and research opportunities that weren't just coming into these spaces and saying, hey, we're from WashU, we're going to do this research, do the research and just walk out, but making sure that research is being done amongst the community and letting community lead these conversations. And recognizing my privilege and all of that was definitely something that I wanted to make sure that I was well aware of in coming to St. Louis and recognizing, hey, we can't just come into these spaces and take control of the conversation and the narrative. And I think that that's um, in connecting with um, professors here. Like yesterday, I had a early morning meeting at the medical school campus with um, a current doctor, and he's also a professor, Matt Coleman, and um, uh, Jacinda, she is the, um, the program manager at the Global Health Center and the Institute of Public Health and talking to them and connecting with them around opportunities that um, I could get involved in and volunteering in St. Louis and making sure <clears throat> that again that piece of hey I'm not just coming in with all this privilege as a public health student and making sure that I'm working amongst people and not working on like above them that's mm -hmm. definitely something that I've recognized and been able to do so in a place like St. Louis. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to let you guys go first <laughs> and see what the, the, there's a lot to unpack in that answer, I think, uh -huh. that is just like not doable within like a two minute answer. <laughs> um, one thing I will say though about St. Louis is that like the amount of museums, the amount of like mm -hmm. food, the like great music scene here, like there's just no way to do it justice within like the two minute answer. But I will uh, try to do a little bit more uh, as Ugbai was alluding to earlier about like the history of St. Louis and sort of our position mm -hmm. as social work and public health professionals who are called into these like uh, social service professions um, is that one of the things that makes St. Louis such a great place to study in um, and to live in and to work in is like as Ugbai was mentioning before like the unique history of St. Louis but also like it's not the, the, way that it, the way that racism, the way that segregation, the way that white flight manifested in St. Louis is unique to St. Louis, but it is also something that is like right. a blueprint across the entire country. Absolutely. So no matter what city you're going to, whether it's Washington DC, whether it's Los Angeles, whether it's Houston, or any of those other, it's the story of every single city in America. And I think St. Louis, particularly around racial equity conversations, is at the forefront of those mm -hmm. conversations, yeah. especially with 
uh, all of the all sort of the explosion of activism that was catalyzed by the um, uprisings in Ferguson in 2014. And I have the privilege of um, working right now as a data and research ca um, fellow over at Ford through Ferguson, which was the organization created after the Ferguson Commission to continue for that work and to try to start getting all of these organizations that are working in education, that are working in housing, that are working in health, out of their silos of just working in that one particular area and realizing that if you, um, without having that sort of transdisciplinary collaboration, you're gonna keep having people falling through the cracks. Um, and if you don't take like a system-wide lens, if you, don't, uh, if you don't move beyond the programmatic into the policy realm, then you aren't going to get the sort of sustainable change that you're looking for that can actually um, start to change people's life outcomes. Um, so I think St. Louis, um, I'm really happy that I came to St. Louis to study because otherwise I wouldn't have had those opportunities. Well, well said, everybody. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Also, too, uh, career-wise, St. Louis is a great place to be, um, especially attending the Brown School. Yeah. There's so many alums in just <laughs> amazing positions. Um, one thing I will suggest is uh, when you come here, definitely make relationships with alumni development because um, it's their job to put you in front of alums who are doing <laughs> great work. Mm -hmm. So I've met with a lot of um, VPs of banks. Um, I was able to intern with the St. Louis Archangels as a social worker. Um, that rarely happens. They're an actual, um, a they're angel investors. And I was able to um, be a part <laughs> of that team where I was looking at different um, companies, analyzing their financials. Um, and providing recommendations to the angel investors with regards to how their investment will make a social, economic, and uh, political um, return on investment. So, um, yeah, being here, like everyone was saying, like we have a lot of access and a lot of privilege to do good work for the community. Um, and also, like doing needs-based assessments, like not just going into the communities and telling them what they need to do. Yeah having them have a seat at the table, you know, because they're the experts. And that's one of the things I, I really appreciate about the Brown School. It gives us a chance to take a step back. Mm -hmm. And just, just to kind of add on to that, um, there is a plethora of nonprofits in St. Louis. Right. And mm -hmm. they are all trying to do some really important work. And you can find people to work with in just about any area of focus that you want to here in town. And the beauty of that is these, these organizations are here to stay and they're not gonna just go in, do a project and then leave. They're here for the long haul to help their community. And so being a part of that is really, really rewarding. That's great, thank you all for sharing that. And um, Jackson, I think you led really beautifully into our, our next question before we get into the questions that were submitted from the audience. Um, so how do you feel the Brown School has prepared you for the future, both personally and professionally? So you mentioned a little bit about connecting with alumni and career services. I'm wondering if any of you have anything else to add, how you feel like the Brown School is, is preparing you for your next steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say that, um, like, I think I have three things to say. One of them is like the being able to leverage the networks uh, not only of your professors, but also of your classmates. Because, right. um, you know, you alone you can only cast so wide a net, but like Jackson was saying earlier, we're, we're building a family here, essentially. And so you, you're able to tap into those networks that, um, people that, of people that you know while you're at the Brown School, and they can also be potential contacts for in the future as well, because like you're meeting people who are going to be the thought leaders of the future. Um, the second thing that I would say is that there's a lot of, there's also a lot of emphasis on like hard skills as well mm -hmm. um, so through the skill lab offerings. Um, so particularly for like the MPH program, um, because there's such an emphasis as well on making sure that everyone is well-rounded, not only on like the social determinants of health aspect, but also to do just like the base level things that like most MPH graduates would be able to do after they graduate in terms of biostatistics and epidemiology and learning all the different statistical software packages. Um, and just like data analysis, and since we're living in the era of big data to begin with, <laughs> is like a very, very desirable skill. It's a highly marketable skill. And then uh, the third thing that I would say too is like start early 
with uh, building relationships with career services because they're the folks that have connections to alumni. They are the folks that like know which employers are looking for which skill sets. They, it's literally part of their job description to keep up to date um, with like what it is that employers in the public health and social work areas are looking for and then reporting that back out to the deans of the of the associate deans of each of the programs and making sure that that's being integrated into the curriculum to make sure that our graduates are well prepared for the workforce once they get out of the Brown School. That's a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. For me, um, you know, I, oh, I forgot um, some more professors, Heather Cameron, <laughs> <laughs> social entrepreneurship, Ken Franklin, social economic and political environment, um, also two good professors. Yeah. And the faculty that I mentioned before, um, I literally came to the school, as corny as it sounds, with a dream. Um, when I was working for DC Public Schools um, as a case manager, there was low participation um, amongst fathers in uh, special education meetings. And like I made it like a mission to like go recruit fathers and talk to them and things of that nature, and I was unsuccessful. Um, however, uh, I went to the bar. There was a, a neighborhood barber shop that I would just go to get a fresh haircut what, once a week, or just go and just talk shop with them, you know, sports and things of that nature. And um, normally, I would get my hair cut around five o'clock. And this is a plug. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know when it's going. Um, <laughs> I would normally get my hair cut around 5 o'clock, you know, because I'm busy <laughs> from 8 to 4.30. And like a few months later, my barber told me to come in around like 12 o'clock. And when I came in 12, damn near all the fathers that I was looking for were at this shop. And they saw how I was interacting with barbers. Mm -hmm. And um, I started using barbers as core service providers. Mm -hmm. So um, because it was a safe place, like we weren't violating HIPAA, you know, um, I had a relationship with the barbers already. Yeah. So if I needed a phone number or an address, you know, if I called someone and I was like, I've talked to one of the barbers, I can't get in the hold of so-and-so. Well, mm -hmm. he was arrested. Oh, that makes sense. Um, and I didn't know how to do anything with that idea until I got to the Brown School and met with all the professors that I mentioned before. Um, I did an independent study with uh, Professor Jack Kirkland where I was turning black barbershops into independent, um, I'm sorry, I was turning black barbershops um, into social economic development agencies. Mm -hmm. And through networking, um, I met with Equifax and they offered me a paid practicum to um, develop a program where we're teaching financial wow. education in black barbershops. Wow. And um, I plan to <laughs> to ride this all the way yeah, to the yeah, bank. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, the, the things that I'm able to do now are a direct result of the Brown School. Yeah. Um, and the program I'm working on is called the Barbershop Project. And, um, you know, I'm actually in the talks with this uh, multi million dollar company called Squire. And they're an app, uh, a barbershop app, where they're doing. Um, uh, not only HR management, but you can schedule your appointments on this app. And they're wanting to, uh, they asked me to, do, to build a financial education curriculum. None of that would be possible unless I came to the Brown School. Yeah. Um, when I tell you that the faculty here are so invested in your interest and passion, believe me when I tell you this. Wow. Yeah. I, thank you for sharing that. How do we follow That's incredible. That? I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I do, Jackson, I want to give you a little bit of credit. You said you couldn't do it without the Brown School. Yeah. Also, that wouldn't, none of that would have happened if you wouldn't have had that dream and that idea yeah. and that passion, yeah. too. So, got to give, got to give you a little credit, too. Appreciate it. But, mm -hmm. oh, that's really cool. I'm looking forward to see, like, what comes about the next step. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Next year. That's really cool. Um, so now we're going to move into the questions that were submitted beforehand. We, again, got a ton of questions, which is really cool. Um, Christian's going to have to leave pretty quickly. So there was one that was submitted during this session. Um, so I want to touch on that. Um, what do you think is the most important thing to consider when choosing an MPH program? Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if maybe Christian or Vad could, um, could speak to that. I think that depends on every individual person, like yeah. what their values are and sort of like where they rank those values. Um, in particular for me, because I'm acutely aware of like my family's financial situation, like they're, uh, both my parents are immigrants from Mexico and they don't have uh, a formal education past elementary school. 
Um, so I knew from the get-go that finances would be a very important determining factor when choosing MPH programs, but that, that may not be the case for everybody else. Like there, maybe your number one priority is like what are the career opportunities that I can cultivate while I'm in the MPH program, or maybe your um, you know, maybe your, pri your priority consideration is the location of the school mm -hmm. or things of that nature. So I think it's, it's a little bit up to everybody's own individual preference, whether that's finances, whether that's um, the curriculum, whether that's opportunities post-graduation um, and things of that nature. So uh, this is a very tricky question yeah. to answer because yeah. uh, I can't give a blanket statement <laughs> for everybody. Um, just know that like, you, you have to find the what whatever is the best fit for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that? Um, I think 100% what um, Christian was saying. And then also on top of that, I think for me, when I was looking at the Brown School, it was um, I also applied to a lot of schools when I was <laughs> applying to graduate school. And I had th like this little spreadsheet and it like had cost and um, specialization and um, like location and what professors I saw and I think for me being a global health specialization like global health in St. Louis as opposed to global health in Washington DC is going to be very different and like sure. um, the experiences you gain from that but for me I kind of flipped the script on that and recognizing okay I could have gone to a school in DC and I would have been like in an oversaturated space with all these other students that are also competing to get practicum and um, internship opportunities in DC for global for in the global health sector or I could be in a place like St. Louis where there's well-connected um, professors and a huge alumni network here where I could mm -hmm. use that leverage and then use it from there and kind of be like hey I'm kind of different like I went to Wash U in St. Louis but I have this like global perspective I think that for me that was definitely something that um, I considered when looking at an MPH program and also uh, just as I move the next steps and considering where I want to go after my MPH, definitely. Great. Thank you both for sharing yeah. that. And with that, Christian, I think that's probably uh, time for you to yeah. um, head out. But thank you so much for joining us. Um, Christian also is one of our student ambassadors. So if you have some specific questions, I am going to plug him. Um, so it's like bad. But if you have, uh, if you have questions and like really want to connect with Christian, he is um, he's still around. Absolutely. So. Um, Moving forward, we're probably not going to get to all the questions that oh we have, goodness, which is yeah. very exciting. So in case yeah. that we don't, um, you can certainly reach out to us through Brown, our Brown Admissions email account, um, and we can connect with you that way. But we'll try to like move through these um, quickly, pretty quick. Yeah. I know I'm very chatty, so yeah. that's makes a little, a little tricky. Um, so OK, there's a couple questions that were submitted um, beforehand. Um, Oh wait, we're getting something on the screen. Let's ask this. <laughs> so we've had a couple questions that were submitted from folks watching um, uh, around mental health um, mm -hmm. concentration and direct practice clinical work at the Brown School. So let me, so, okay. Uh, while MSW research is interesting to me, I'm primarily interested in clinical social work. Uh, what would you recommend applying to the Brown School if that is my focus? And then also, um, could you share a little bit about mental health concentration and then what is experience um, outside the classroom around mental health concentration? So are any of you mental health currently? I scattered? started out okay. as mental health yeah. concentration. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jackson, did you start out? Did you apply mental health? I did. I and applied then you're SAD. and then okay. I'm social economic development. But I'm right now I am taking differential diagnosis mm -hmm. okay. and uh, that's been extremely interesting. Um, I knew that if I had to take one mental health course, differential diagnosis was suggested. Um, I work at the Harris House as a program monitor. Um, it's a substance abuse and um, alcohol recovery center and the CEO was saying that if you just take one class, make sure it's differential diagnosis. And my friends that are amongst the mental health concentration, they also have access to, they're, they're doing practicums, and a lot of them actually have been hired mm -hmm. um, this semester, so they know where they're working um, mm -hmm. after they graduate. And you know, there's so many companies and nonprofits, like you said, in St. Louis, and mm -hmm. you will have access to uh, complete your practicum there. Yeah. And Kind of going along with that, I, I'm first year MSW, and 
even though I've moved from a mental health concentration to uh, behavioral health and in, uh, integrated health, it's still a, an area of interest for me. And they, the Brown School really does a good job of setting you up for success as a clinician. So it's not, even though you s you've got two more generalist social workers sitting on, on the couch, don't, don't get the impression that they don't pay a lot of attention to clinical practice, because they do. And so much so that I've got classmates that are doing their practicum, their foundation practicum, which is first year practicum, um, in providers' offices, and they're already leading like our co-facilitating group therapy sessions mm -hmm. and things like that. So you definitely will get the clinical experience that you're looking for when you come here. Um, they do a very good job of preparing you for that. And the, the differential diagnosis is an amazing course. Uh, I was going to take it this spring, but I'm going to do it more in a year because <laughs> I have that uh, social, um, social policy whole curriculum to go through before I take on my second year of MSW. So. Yeah, that's great. So um, again, just to reiterate that, I think, uh, as we've mentioned earlier, there's a lot of there's a lot of content area at the Brown School. Some folks have more generalist, maybe a more meso or micro approach, but there's a meso or macro, but there's a lot of people who do focus on micro on direct practice and clinical work mm -hmm. as well. Um, I do believe, I don't have the numbers, but um, the mental health uh, concentration is one of our most um, popular concentrations and the largest, um, at least from the admission standpoint. Mm -hmm. admissions, I can speak to that at least. Um, so, so yeah, there, you'll certainly find people there and professors and, and opportunities if you're interested in that. Um, let's see. I'm trying to be mindful of time. I really like this question. Uh, what's the biggest charm about the Brown School to you? I just, oh. I really liked that <laughs> phrasing. Um, the biggest charm. I'm not sure what that means to you yeah. all, but I, I just, uh, when I, I enjoy that. Yeah, when I think charm, I think aesthetics like it's mm. really pretty like the buildings are really pretty <laughs> Hillman yeah. is brand new and it's like oh. there it is <laughs> all those windows it's actually really refreshing and now that mm. it's been like the weather has been nicer um you I've been like what you during <laughs> winter I'm from Minnesota this isn't real winter um, <laughs> during it's winter wrong. if we have the options of like walking we have like little tunnels in between um in between buildings so like we technically didn't have to walk outside but now that it's warm outside i can like sit outside mm -hmm. and sit on the rooftop garden and it's mm -hmm. charming it's very charming <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i think i think just the whole campus as a whole is just beautiful yeah. it's uh even now i when i'm walking from the train to the to Hillman, I, I'm like looking around going, my God, I go to school here. Oh, yeah. it's, it's just incredible. Um, but you were talking about going outside, and that's a big thing it's when it is warmer. Everybody sits outside, outside of Hillman. I don't know if you can see it. Just like, off to yeah, the right end here. there, uh, they all sit off to that side and have their lunch outside, and everybody's conversing. And so there, it, it's that whole sense of community Absolutely. again. That, that it's a lot of fun yeah. so yeah beautiful campus <laughs> <laughs> i just i really like the phrasing of that question i thought mm -hmm. that was um, yeah just a, a different sort of different sort of question we've addressed some of these already so someone asked are you able to focus on your independent research it sounds like jackson already answered that you were able to do an independent study with um, professor kirkland correct. All right. yeah. correct okay um I'm like breezing through some of these yeah. uh what's Maybe we've answered this, but if anyone wants to add, um, what's one thing you wish you knew before attending the Brown School? Was there anything that um, you wish you knew, yeah, before before attending here? We may have. I think we kind of touched okay. on that, right? We've I covered wish, a lot of ground. I, I <laughs> yeah. do wish that um, I applied to the business school because mm. um, being a social worker uh, with a concentration in social economic development. Um, I find myself, like, I'm legit in the business world, and having those, um, those accounting skills and things of that nature mm -hmm. would definitely be helpful, but yeah. I'm very grateful that I was able to, you know, um, like I mentioned earlier, intern with St. Louis Archangel's and, uh, Angel Investment Firm here in St. Louis, um, and I was able to gain those skills. And there are other, like the MPH program, MSP, um, if you can do a dual degree, um, you know, Kill two birds with one stone, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. 
definitely like two degrees in three years. So it's not like you're committing to be here like forever. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a really, really helpful thing. And that maybe is what, what I wish I had known before I got here mm -hmm. because it took me until almost the end of January to actually commit to applying to the MSP program. Mm -hmm. um, but I had figured out after being here and it being in a, uh, a policy class, I actually like working with policy. <laughs> so it was, if I had known that ahead of time, I might have tried to, to work my way into applying for that program earlier or even just knowing that it was here, because I didn't really find out about it until like admitted students weekend or yeah. something like that. So it was, it's just, it, there's so many different things that you wish you knew <laughs> that just, that you discover while you're here that it's just, it's just an incredible experience. Thank you. Um, someone asked, uh, what advice can you give to someone who has never gone out of state for school? How do you mm. find a routine? Mm. Um, it sounds like all of you moved out of state, correct? Yeah, so mm. I'm wondering if, um, if yeah. you could share a little bit about that. Um, for me, I lived at home during undergrad, and um, the only time that I was away from home was a semester that I spent abroad. Um, but moving to Italy as opposed to St. Louis is very different. Um, and coming here, I think finding that routine was really a big piece in like my actual mental health and um, like success during my first semester because um, at first, prior to coming to the Brown School, I w tried to get um, one of the oh one of the MRFs and um, the master's research fellow, and I didn't get one of them. So I was like kind of under stress. I was like, oh my gosh, I won't have a research position. But um, thankfully, I don't know why, but Brianna approached me about becoming a student ambassador, so then I got that job. And then um, a few months later, um, Dr. Angela Hobson, who has been an incredible professor, um, approached me at Joe Steen's most Thanksgiving dinner that he hosts for all of his students <laughs> during Thanksgiving, and she approached me about um, uh, research positions. Mm -hmm. So both of my roles now that I have at the Brown School, I didn't apply for them, and people um, people approached me about them, and it's really refreshing to know that like building that routine has come out of kind of networking essentially mm -hmm. and just being me and um, I think that the routine is going to it's difficult at first but definitely scheduling time scheduling free time because at first you have all this free time and you're like there's only so much studying I can do during the first week of school yeah. um, but definitely setting those times and also enjoying yourself and like making sure you're setting time to you know either go have brunch with friends or like mm -hmm. go to the go to forest park or um, enjoy a yoga session or something yeah. um, but definitely finding time for yourself and also setting schedules for things that you need to get done essentially yeah um, I think one of the things that uh, I found really helpful was when we were looking for a place uh, there are so many different neighborhoods here in St. Louis, and they're all different. Uh, so it, you have to find one that, that fits with your personality and yeah. your flavor, because honestly, you can find one. Uh, <laughs> my wife and I chose to live downtown, and she was really, really focused on finding us an apartment. So I, that was something I didn't have to worry too much about. But she found us an apartment that was right on the Metrolink train mm. line. So Literally, I walk out my door, get on the train, and come to school. Mm -hmm. and, and it lets me out on the corner of the campus. And so looking for things like that that help you, so I don't have to worry about driving to school yeah. or finding parking or doing things like that, which can be, can be a challenge for anyone at any, at any school. Mm -hmm. But in St. Louis, it's, it's, it's can, driving can be a little bit of a challenge <laughs> in this city. So it's... It's nice to know that I don't have that to worry about. And that gives me a routine because I can check over notes or whatever while I'm on the train coming to class. And the other nice thing about that is Wash U provides a, a pass that allows you to ride on the metro trains and, and buses here in the city. So 
that's a really helpful benefit that I, I, I didn't know about also. Mm -hmm. So going back to that other question, what you didn't yeah. know, so. Yeah. Um, so we had a number of questions that submitted beforehand um, around funding. And mm -hmm. so I, I don't think we're gonna have um, enough time to really give that the time and space that it deserves. Absolutely. But I do wanna plug, um, we are having a virtual info session in May that is around um, uh, part-time job employment and how to essentially live on a budget um, as a graduate student. Mm -hmm. And so if you're yeah. interested in viewing another info session with us, join us in May and we'll talk more about that. And then if you just um, have more specific questions or wanna talk to current students, then, um, then reach out to us and we can connect you with folks um, to still get those those answers addressed, um, and any of these answers, or any of these questions that we didn't get to today. Uh, ambassadors, it's our job. Yeah, so like maybe you'll <laughs> chat with us bad, um, or Christian, or um, someone else from our wonderful team, or if you wanna chat with an admissions specialist, I'm really, really happy to connect with you as well, and my contact information will be um, on, this, on the next slide here. So I wanna do um, a quick plug for our Admitted Students Weekend, which is April 3rd and 4th. Um, to read and learn more about that, you can go to bradschool.wusl.edu slash ASW. Um, registration is required, uh, and you can find all that information there, as well as a draft um, agenda. If you are an MPH student, then there is also optional programming for MPH students beginning on that Thursday, April 2nd. Um, again, for admitted students, we have a number of resources available to you. So on our admitted students resource page, um, you can confirm your intent to enroll, find those financial aid and funding resources, um, and just general updates on um, things going around here. Uh, our last plug is we are still accepting applications. So we are on rolling admissions right now. Um, you can expect to receive your decision within four to six weeks of submitting your application. So um, I wanna thank all of our panelists that are here and Christian who had to leave a bit early. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing your stories and sharing a bit about um, your thought process and how you ended up coming here. Yeah, what's up? Mm -hmm. One more thing. Um, getting your MSW or your MPH is not taking a vow of poverty. You can make <laughs> money as a social worker. Um, and one of the things that, um, a couple plugs, Jenny Harpering, Dave Stifler, um, they're all in the corporate social responsibility space. Um, if you're interested in that, please talk to me. Um, the Brown School, we are not making um, poor people feel comfortable in poverty. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at individuals and communities. Um, our goal is to transition them to healthy interdependency. So there's that. I can't, that was so corny. I can't believe that. No, I've always wanted to do that. that. <laughs> no, that was, thank you, Jack. I, I'm, I really appreciate you saying that. I mean, can you just host the next session? Like, um, but again, thank you. Thank you all for, for joining and for, for sharing yourselves with some of our um, interested folks. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find our information here. And we look forward to staying in touch. Take care. <laughs>